ಅಭಯ ಪ್ರದ ಮಣಿಗಣೈ The world may be imbibed with several hidden treasures but there is one that is rare natural beauty endowed with a story of success a diverse land where the sun rises each day to awaken its people to a new story of success meet the awakening global giant called India 10 million Indian graduates passing out every year reflect the deep-rooted legacy inherited from the first university in the world, Takshashila, known as the largest consumer of gold. It has the largest railway and postal networks. Here, the fifth largest economy in the world is awakening with a youthful energy. An awakening global giant that is contributing to rapid global changes. In the last decade of the 20th century, Indian economy opened its doors to the world. Today, world's top companies feel proud to have their presence in India. Petrochemicals, technology, cement and steel, agriculture, fertilizers, multinationals in all sectors have been playing prominent roles in Indian markets for more than a decade now and on its part this global giant called India has responded fabulously to this new scenario by opening both its hands to welcome the world the first step in aligning itself to this change was to improve the infrastructure across the length and breadth of this great nation new channels of communication were set up, newer railway tracks were laid, road networks were enhanced, modern bridges, dams, tunnels were constructed as a part of this effort. India was rejuvenating. Naini Bridge across River Yamuna near the historic city of Prayag is one of the prominent bridges built. Not only in the last decade, but in the entire history of Indian bridges. A unique structure, unique landmark in more than one way. It is an interesting story of how this modern technological wonder was constructed by successfully tackling challenge after challenge. It is a story of the river across which it was constructed, of the people for whom it was constructed, and of the people who actually contributed in realizing this dream. The old bridge over the river Yamuna is a dual road cum rail bridge. Built in the mid-twenties of the last century, this bridge was proving to be inadequate to the current traffic demands. Frequent traffic jams had become a regular feature of the city. कम से कम पांच छह बार तो आना जाना हो ही जाता है दिक्कत होती है जाम लगा रहता है अक्सर ट्रकें खराब हो जाती हैं बारह बारह घंटा जाम लगा रहता है सारे सारे लोग परेशान हो जाते हैं कितनों का एग्जाम छूट जाता है कितनों की ड्यूटी से एब्सेंट लग जाती है मतलब इतनी सारी परेशानियां हैं इससे कि इसको बयान नहीं किया जा सकता कि मौतें हो चुकी हैं एक दो नहीं सैकड़ों मौतें हो चुकी हैं इस तरह से अच्छा है इससे इलाहाबाद के पब्लिक के लिए ही नहीं पूरे हिंदुस्तान की पब्लिक के लिए ये बहुत ही बेनिफिशियल है इस ब्रिज से हमारे इलाहाबाद में टू व्हीलर वालों का बहुत ज्यादा एक्सीडेंट होता है साइड से वर्ट करने के चक्कर में वो अक्सर अपनी जान से हाथ दो बैठते हैं और इस ब्रिज से जाम बहुत ज्यादा लगता है जिसमें पब्लिक को काफी परेशानी होती है ट्रक वाले फोर व्हीलर एट व्हीलर जितने भी है सब जाम में फंसते हैं इसका दर का हाल हो जाता है पब्लिक पैदल नहीं निकला अति तो बोर्ड से उस पार जाती है to overcome this, the National Highway Authority of India, NHAI, decided to construct a new cable state bridge, parallel to the existing bridge, under the financial assistance 
from the Japan Bank for International Cooperation. The government of Uttar Pradesh acquired the land and handed it over to NHAI for construction of the bridge. With an estimated cost of 294.7 crore rupees, this bridge has been designed as well as supervised by a joint venture formed by Koei Consulting Engineers and Planners AS Denmark and Span Consultants New Delhi, Hyundai Engineering and Construction Company Limited South Korea and Hindustan Construction Company Limited India BBR of Switzerland in joint venture with BBR India Limited Bangalore with the approved subcontractor for post-tensioning work, installation of stay cables as well as from travelers. Usha Martin Industries from Ranchi have manufactured the fully locked coil cables, while Metco from Kolkata has supplied the bearings. Following a detailed survey of the area on both the banks of the Yamuna, the National Highway Authority of India finalized the alignment of the new bridge, connecting GT Road on NH2 on the Allahabad side with Rewa Road on NH27 on the Naini side. The total length of the connection is 5.155 kilometers, comprising of 3.5 kilometers of approaches and 1.5 kilometers of actual bridge. The river Yamuna is still extensively used for navigational purpose by local people. Hence, another challenge before NHAI was not to disturb the navigational use of the river. Therefore, it was decided to opt for a cable stayed bridge as it provides wider navigational passage. For speedy and systematic completion of the work, the entire scope of work was divided into four independent modules. Module 1 contains cable stayed portion of 630 meters length with a central span of 260 meters supported on double D well foundations with a depth of up to 40 meters. Approach viaduct of 550 meters length on the Nani side with spans of 60 meters founded on circular well foundations is included in module 2. Whereas a 365 meter long approach on the Ilabad side with 25 meter spans supported on 1.2 meter diameter piles is included in module 3. Approach road works, which includes embankment works, retaining walls, cross drainage works, pavement works, safety signboards, etc. are included in Module 4. The bridge is designed to be very slender with two girder system. For the main cable state portion, the total depth of the bridge span is only 1.5 meter and its two longitudinal girders are 18.2 meter apart with post tension cross girders spaced at every 5 meter. Longitudinal post tensioning is done only at the center and at either end of the cable state portion of the bridge. I am CS Park project manager of Hyundai. Hyundai is the leader of Hyundai HCC joint venture. Hyundai carry out module 1 cable state portion. Cape State has 60, 630 meters superstructure with two pylons. Foundation was well types, 40 meters steps, and the pylon 90 meters height. And the superstructure has one middle span, two side span, and two end spans. Total 630 meters. Foundation well type and the pylon was constructed using the climbing foam. And the superstructure was constructed using foam traveler and with cable installation. This state cable is specially manufactured by manufacturer Usha Martin and it is very important to manage the good quality control during the manufacturing of cable. After the center line of the bridge was established 
with the help of precise survey, foundation works were taken up. Foundations of the pylons supporting cable state portion B17 and B18 had to be built in the middle of the river bed. Hence, coffer dams were built to serve the purpose. To obtain access to these coffer dams, as well as to well foundations to be built in the riverbed, jetties were constructed on both the banks. The jetty on the Nani side is 260 meters long with double sheet piles, whereas the jetty on the Elabad side is 100 meter long timber jetty. The sheet piles are driven into the riverbed with the help of an electrically operated vibro sinker. For access to coffer dams from the Nani side, a catwalk has been constructed. Well Foundation Work The well foundation work is executed in following stages. Cutting edge, well curb, staining, bottom plug and well cap. Cutting edge The primary function of a cutting edge is to cut the soil strata beneath the ground level and facilitate the sinking of the well to the desired funding level. The cutting edge is fabricated at the fabrication yard and consists of back-to-back -back angles welded with a 12 mm plate on the outer periphery of the angles. The angles of size 150 by 150 by 12 mm are procured from approved manufacturers. The root of the angles is ground to provide a V-cut. The depth of the V-cut is checked with a template and welding is then carried out. The back-to-back -back welded angles are bent using a hydraulic press to achieve the required curvature. Before the final assembly of the angles, holes are drilled into the face of the angle to receive the bond bars. The pieces of the cutting edge are assembled on the platform and the joints are welded to make it an integral unit. Stiffeners are provided as per the design to provide rigidity. Before the placement of the cutting edge, the ground is leveled and the center point is established with respect to the reference pillars. The cutting edge is placed on sleepers which are arranged along the periphery of the cutting edge. Well curb. Once the cutting edge is placed in its position, the activity of casting the well curb begins. The inner form of the well curb is placed in position. It is supported by brackets which rest on the ground. The joints in the form are tightly secured. After this, reinforcement bars are fixed as per the design and the outer form of the well curb is fixed. The supervision consultants check the entire arrangement before commencing the concreting. The concreting is carried out using concrete pumps and transit mixers. The concrete is poured at the rate of 0.75 meters per hour in layers. Needle vibrators are used for compacting the concrete. The outer form is removed 24 hours after the concreting is over. The outer surface is covered with hessian cloth and continuous curing is carried out. The inner form is removed 72 hours after concreting is over. After removal of the inner form, the well curb is pitched into the ground by removal of sleeper placed beneath the cutting edge. The dredging inside the well curb is carried out manually. Well staining. When the well curb is partially sunk into the ground, the well staining activity begins. The well staining is built in lifts of 2.5 meters and sunk into the ground. For casting the staining, the inner form made of steel is positioned and aligned vertically. Then the reinforcement is fixed as per the drawings. It is then covered with the outer formwork. 
the outer forms are arranged to the true dimensions of the well staining. When the pour is ready, the consultants check the entire arrangements for concreting. The concrete is transported from the patch plant and is poured using the concrete pump. Concreting is done in clockwise direction in layers. The green concrete is vibrated using needle vibrators. After 24 hours of curing, the de-shuttering is done. Gauge marking are provided on both the axes and continuous curing is carried out. Well sinking. Well sinking is an important activity and is carried out with the utmost care. The wells are sunk into the ground by their own weight. The soil underneath the cutting edge and inside the central dredge hole is removed by dredging using grabs. The continuous grabbing operation is carried out till the well is sunk down to the desired level. The soil in soft strata can be removed by only grabbing. However, in the case of hard strata, the chiseling and grabbing method is deployed to loosen and then grab soil from inside the dredge hole. Care is taken that the dredging is carried out in a uniform manner inside the dredge hole. In case of double well, the grabbing is carried out uniformly in the outer dredge holes, employing two cranes followed by inner dredge hole. Readings are taken during sinking on the gauge marks to measure any shifts or tilts, which if noticed are corrected by eccentric dredging or by placing eccentric cantilage loads and carefully monitoring the movement of the wells. After the well is sunk to the desired level, the process of concreting takes place again and the same cycle of concreting and dredging is repeated till the well reaches the agreed founding level. Well plug. When the well reaches the founding level, grabbing operations are discontinued and the well is made ready for plugging. Confirmatory bores are taken to study the soil parameters. Concreting of bottom plug is carried out by tremie arrangement. The tremie pipe with tightly sealed joints is lowered into the well and a hopper is placed on top to receive concrete. A swivel concrete distributor connected to the concrete pump is placed at the center of the well. The concreting is carried out in clockwise direction, moving from one hopper to the other. Pile Foundation Module 3 of the project vis-a-vis -vis the approach viaduct on the Allahabad side is founded on 1200 mm diameter concrete piles. Each pile group consists of four piles, with a total of 130 piles for the viaduct. The board cast in situ piles are installed using Casa Granda piling equipment using retrievable casing pipes. The oscillator of the piling machine is placed at the pile coordinates previously marked on the ground. Casing pipes are driven into the ground by rotating the oscillator. Verticality of the casing is checked at regular intervals. As the casing pipes are driven, a tiny grab is employed to remove the muck from inside the casing. When the casing pipes are driven to the desired depth, soundings are taken to check whether further boring operation is required. Thereafter, the reinforcement cage is lowered into the bore. Concrete is placed inside the casing by crane and bucket arrangement through a tremi pipe of 200 mm diameter fitted with a hopper. Concrete is delivered continuously to the bottom of the pile bore in stages of 3 meters. When each stage is completed, the casing along with tremi is lifted out 
and concreting is continued up to about one meter above the cutoff level. The pile is then chipped off up to the cutoff level. An integrity test is carried out to check the soundness of the pile concrete. Load testing. The installed piles are tested for the working load capacity envisaged in the design. This include two initial and routine load tests each. The initial load test consists of lateral and vertical loading. The vertical load is applied by a kindledge in the form of jumbo sandbags, each weighing one ton in nine tiers, corresponding to a total load of 850 tons placed on a platform erected on top of the pile. Increments of 20% of test load are maintained for one hour and the displacement of the pile is recorded by means of dial gauges. When the final load increment is given, the final displacement is noted and working load is calculated from load displacement graph. Pile caps. Before commencing the activity of pile caps, all the pile are exposed and chipped off to the cutoff level. 100 mm PCC is laid on the plan area of the pile cap and cured. Concreting is carried out using concrete pump and vibrated using needle vibrators. The top surface of the pile cap is made plain using trowels and curing is carried out by ponding arrangements. Pier shafts. The pier shafts in the module 3 are of size 1200 mm by 2000 mm in plan with heights varying from 2.5 meters to 7.5 meters and are cast in a single lift. The steel forms are made as per the design. When the rebar fixing is completed for the pier shaft, the foam works are placed and aligned for the verticality and center line. Concreting for the pier shafts is carried through crane and bucket arrangement and it is vibrated through the needle vibrators. De-shuttering for the pier shaft is carried out 24 hours after concreting. The surface of the shaft is warped with hessian cloth and curing is carried out. Well cap. After the completion of the bottom plug, well is prepared for well cap concreting. All the well caps are of 7.5 meter diameter and of 2 meter height. The rebars for the well cap are fixed and dowels are left projected for pier shaft. The side forms made of steel are erected. After the completion, consultants check the entire arrangement and concreting is carried out using concrete pumps and vibrated using needle vibrators. The top surface of the pile cap is made plain using trowels and curing is carried out by ponding arrangements. Pier shaft. Pier shafts in module 2 and module 1 are hexagonal in cross section and the height varies from 8 meters at the abutment A2 to 25 meters at pier B20. After completion of rebar fixing, steel forms are placed and aligned for verticality and center line. The arrangement is checked by the consultants and then concreting is carried out using concrete pumps and vibrated using needle vibrators. The shuttering is done after an interval of 24 hours. Concrete surface is then wrapped with hessian cloth and curing is carried out. Pier cap. Casting of pier cap is the next activity. Pier caps in this project are polygonal in shape and 2 meter in height. The procedure for casting is same as that for pier shaft. Pedestal. Pedestal is the last activity of the substructure. A typical pedestal is of size 1.9 meters 
by 1.9 meters. After fixing reinforcement for the pedestal, steel form panels are fixed. Prior to fixing, they are cleaned and a coat of foam release agent is applied. Pockets are left before concreting to receive the anchor studs of the bearings into the pedestal. Concreting in this case is carried out manually and vibrated using needle vibrators. Concreting is done up to 20 millimeters from the top. Balance concreting is done by grouting when the bearings are placed. T-shuttering is carried out after an interval of 15 hours. The surface is then covered with hessian cloth and curing is carried out. Access platforms are provided during the work for the movement of the manpower and for inspection. With the completion of activity of casting pedestal, we come to the end of substructure activities. Construction of superstructure. The superstructure part of the project consists of the following. Two spans in module one, with one span on each side of the river. Nine spans in module two, 15 spans in module three, and the cable state part consisting of deck from the center of each polygon connecting the spans on either side of river. The superstructure is cast in situ and is cast in one single pour. Steel foam work is used to cast the superstructure. The foam work is supported on the ground by staging comprising of heavy duty tar and H frame. Providing heavy duty adjustable stirrup heads fixed to the staging tars and H frame facilitates the movement of the framework. The heavy duty tar rests on the precast concrete footing whereas the H frame rests on wooden sleepers of size 1500 by 200 by 100 millimeters. The ground supporting the staging is graded and compacted using a small compactor. Pre-camber in the superstructure is provided in the initial span with least camber of 0 mm at the bearing location and maximum at the center of span. After checking the settlement levels of the deck soffit, provision for the allowable camber for other spans is decided. Before fixing of the reinforcement, the foam panels are applied with a coat of foam release agent and all the joints are sealed using 6 mm foam and filler paste. The fixing of the reinforcement starts from the bridge beam and thereafter the balance reinforcement is placed in position starting from the abutment side proceeding towards the construction joint. After the completion of the bottom reinforcement, post-tensioning sheeting is positioned on the mesh. When the placement of sheeting is complete, the top reinforcement is fixed in position. After the completion of the rebar work, the sheeting is adjusted for its profile with respect to line and level and cable strands are inserted. The reinforcement which projects in footway slab and median slab is also fixed in position. Additional rebars for the expansion joint provided as per the approved drawings. Inserts for the temporary fixing of bridge beam are placed as per the drawings. After final fixing of the reinforcement, the post tensioning cables are again checked for profile as per the final lines and levels. The total concrete in one span of superstructure is approximately 310 cubic meters for module 3 and about 1200 cubic meters for module 2. The concrete is poured in one continuous operation using concrete pumps and it is carried out in strips of 1.5 meters each. The concrete is vibrated using needle vibrators. The final top surface is given a broom finish by using brooms. During nighttime concreting, adequate lighting arrangements are provided. Curing compound is sprayed on the top of the strips as soon as the concreting is completed. For curing, thick hessian cloth 
made into roll and immersed in water is used in two to three layers. It is spread across the deck as soon as initial set of the concrete is achieved and water is sprinkled continuously. Construction of Pylon P17 and P18 A pylon in Module 1 supporting the cable state portion consists of the following Lower leg Lower cross beam Upper leg Upper cross beam and top portion Lower leg of pylon The lower leg of pylon is hexagonal in shape and is inclined at 75.525 degrees it is constructed on the well cap and casting height of the first lift is 4.75 meters including pre camber of 0.05 meters subsequent lifts are cast in heights of 5 meters formwork of peri climbing system is used to suit the requirements of pylon lower leg section and is erected in the specified direction incorporating the necessary pre-camper. The lower leg of pylon is completed in five lifts of 70 cubic meters per lift with M50 grade concrete. Thermocoupler is installed prior to concreting to monitor and record temperature development inside the concrete. Lower cross beam of pylon the lower cross beam of pylon is of size 4 meters by 4 meters and 23.6 meters long hollow section with solid part at both ends of the fifth lift of pylon lower leg. The solid part is shaped hexagonal at bottom construction joint, pentagonal at center level of lower cross beam and then rectangular at the top construction joint. Inclination of solid part changes from 14.475 degrees outward to 7.007 degrees inward at the center level of the lower cross beam. The solid part is cast in two stages. First, up to the center level of the lower cross beam and then up to the construction joint of the pylon upper leg section. The casting is carried out in alternate sequence on both sides of pylon lower leg. The lower cross beam consists of the solid part with the first lift of height 2.3 meters and the second lift of height 3.43 meters. The bottom slab of lower cross beam is 0.8 meters thick and 23.6 meters long. The same is cast after casting of solid parts on both sides of pylon. The total concrete of approximately 166 cubic meters is poured in single go with M50 grade of concrete. Upper leg of pylon. Upper leg of pylon is constructed in a similar manner with climbing formwork. Each pour is of 43 cubic meters and is done with 18 pours per pylon. Construction of cable state portion Until now we have seen how the foundation, substructure and some of the superstructure works were carried out. We will now move on to the cable state portion, the most important and critical both for designing and execution. The construction of a stay cable bridge is, is very unique. At tender stage we do a basis, an outline of the construction uh, details. But we do not go into the very detailed analysis of the construction techniques. This is done while uh, constructing the bridge. Once we have evaluated the tender and have got a, a contractor, um, the contractor then decides how he wants to build the bridge, the weights of the various um, equipment he's going to put on the bridge and he then has to design uh, the construction based on these um, requirements. So for this type of bridge the, the design during construction, what we call the engineering design, is very um, intense. There's a, there's, there's a lot of it uh, which is different to uh, a normal bridge. 
A normal bridge would be designed most likely in its entirety uh, before, uh, before the start of the project. The concrete would, is, is, is fixed, it doesn't move. The bridge will be cast in one place and you wouldn't expect it to go up and down by more than a few millimetres. But for a stay cable bridge, we construct the bridge incrementally and then we load it with either other elements of the bridge or with pavement or with handrails. When we do this, the bridge will actually come down by as much as half a metre in the middle. Uh, all this design has to be um, inputted only once the contractor has been finalised and the contractor has actually finalised his method of working, the way he wants to work. So, when we started this project, we had, a, we had a basic design, we had a basic structure of how we wanted the bridge to look. But the actual construction and the engineering design that went in it was all put in on site um, by both ourselves and the contractor. The contractor employed um, their own consultants to carry out this work. And then we sat, we had many meetings, many discussions on, on how the design could be um, implemented on site. Um, we, we had to do many testings of site to make sure that the concrete strength, the concrete modulus of elasticity that we had estimated during the design was actually the one that was going to be used on site. Um, because, as I said, the, 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 the components, both the deck and the pylon itself, move considerably every day not just once, they move all the time, um, both, as, a, as I said before, both as a result of the, the, the loads we're imposing, but also due to the very high temperature difference here. And we might get um, temperatures varying in one day from 25 degrees at 5 in the morning to 48 degrees at night. And during this temperature variation, we get a very big movement in the bridge and all of this must be taken into account when we're carrying out this engineering design during construction stage. Super structure is fully cast in situ, pure concrete deck slab. During the construction to manage the geometric control, because of this pure concrete deck slab, for the control of shrinkage and creep, it is very important to carry out detailed design analysis, which is the responsibility of the contractor. Finally, we had to carry out the work superstructure by the way of balanced cantilevering and unbalanced cantilevering method. So, before we start the deck superstructure, we did almost one year's period design analysis for the geometric control. This design analysis also submitted to consultant and get the approval and we did the geometric control. I hope we can complete this bridge matching with the design requirement of alignment until we finish the closure joint. The cable stayed portion was constructed from both pylons simultaneously as well as on the central span of each pylon. When concrete in edge beams achieved sufficient strength, the first pair of cables was installed and stressed partially to take care of the span weight. After dismantling the supporting structure, foam travelers were installed in faces to suit the requirement of construction sequence. Four sets of foam travelers were designed and fabricated at site, each of which supported the foam work for in situ concreting. The construction at this stage was carried out in balance cantilever method on both sides of each pylon after final stressing of the first pair of cables. As the bridge was fully supported on cables,
the deck structure as well as the pylons were free to move owing to any concreting, movement of foam traveller, placement of rebars, temperature variations and even position of sun. Early morning surveys of the beams, deck and pylon were carried out after each concreting with total station machines to determine any adjustment to be made to suit the design model before next pour. Extensive surveys were carried out after certain sequences to compare with the computer analysis model. Fine-tuning of the deck profile with respect to design profile is based on year 2024, that is, 20 years after construction. Considering effects of superimposed load on the deck, live load and that of creep and shrinkage of concrete, the deck profile has been kept approximately 350 mm higher than the design profile and the pylons have been kept 150 mm inclined at the top towards 90, which are expected to be vertical in 20 years time. Manufacturing of cables and accessories. This type of construction is uh, unique to India and to many parts of the world. The design of this stay cable bridge is very unique in its makeup. We are using uh, locked coil cables which are made in India. Uh, they're prefabricated off-site. They are brought to site and then installed and stressed here. We have 104 cables ranging diameter from uh, 81 millimeter to 116 millimeter. The length of individual cables range from 45 meters to 145 meters. The bridge has a design life of 120 years, but um, in all intents and purposes would last forever with the required level of maintenance being carried out. HCC um, have a large share of the work on this project as far as length is concerned. They look after um, the two approach viaducts as well as all the earthworks. The viaducts um, one side on the Allahabad side has a foundation of board piles with segments having 20, 25 meter spans and on the 90 side we are foundations are the foundations are of well, well type and the spans are 60 meters both sides are post-tensioned, in-situ cast concrete. We use well foundations on the 90 side because the, the, that section of the bridge is within the floodplain of the river Yamuna. And wherever possible, we try and put well foundations where we have floodplains. Wires. Fully locked cables have been used for this bridge that are very dense and hence of very small diameter ranging from 81 millimeters to 116 millimeters. A cable consists of a rope with sockets at both the ends. Rope is made from wires and wires are made from rods. The rods are cleaned and galvanized before use. This helps in providing protection till further process takes place. This is called pickling. Different combinations of dyes with a very small tolerance are required for getting wires of desired diameter. This is achieved by drawing each run of the wires through a series of seven dies. Each die takes the shape of wire one step nearer the required one. Wires varying in diameter from 2.49 millimeters to 6.88 millimeters have been used for making the ropes used for Nani Bridge. The wires are galvanized and tested before they are used for making ropes. Tension test, bend test and torsion test are carried out. Finally, a shadow machine is used for checking the shape of the finished wire. Stay cable sockets and accessories. This is a fork socket. This is a cylindrical socket with gauging nut. The accessories include pin, end plate, lock plate and thread gauges. The manufacturing of both types of sockets starts with the preparation of a pattern. The sockets are cast at a special foundry 
and the metal is poured at temperature in excess of 1200 degrees Celsius. It is tested for temperature and chemical content before pouring so that deficiencies if any can be adjusted at this stage. The castings include various attachments to allow pouring, removal of air as well as contraction of metal during curing. Machining of the items takes about five days since all the attachments have to be removed and the inner surface made smooth. Testing is carried out throughout the process of completing the sockets. Therefore, it is essential to have the testing laboratory near the place of manufacturing. The tests include tensile test, ultrasonic test and dry penetration test which detects flaws to the outer surface. Rope and Cable a rope consists of initial parallel layers and helical layers wound around it later. Two different rope making machines are used for making parallel and helical layers. A lubricant is applied to the wires in this process. Once the rope is ready, a certain length is overwound with wire before it is cut to the required length. This is called serving. It ensures that the rope does not unwind during the next process. Now is the time for socketing. For this, the wires of the rope are opened and the lubricant applied during rope making is removed. Then a brush is formed to a correct shape as per the shape of the socket. The cable is temporarily attached to the socket for zinc pouring. It is ensured that each wire has a surrounding layer of zinc. After one permanent socket is attached, pre-stretching is carried out. This gets all the slack out of the rope. Then the rope is cut and second socket is attached as per the required length of the cable. The tolerance for the longest rope of 145 meters length is only 17 millimeters. The socketing and the cable are tested at this point of time. A load is applied. If the socketing is done properly, the rope must break outside the area of sockets. For the cables used for Nani Bridge, this test was carried out on an 81 mm diameter stay. The rope broke away from the socket in a clear manner, thus implying the correctness of the socketing. The sockets used for testing are then sectioned at three places to check that zinc has flowed around all the wires. After testing and checking of the overall length, the cables are ready to be transported to site. Erection of Cables The erection of cable stay is carried out in the following stages. Installation of working platform at pylon top. A working platform is installed at the pylon top. Pylon winch can be accessed using the working platform or Alimac hoist at completion. Lifting bobbins of cables onto the deck. Bobbins of cables are lifted onto the uncoiler by barge crane. The cable of approximately 5 to 6 meters is rolled out at one time. Then the clamps and saddles are installed for lifting the cable. Fixing the cable to the upper anchorage. The cable is lifted up to the pinhole level by lifting winch. The fork socket is aligned and fixed. Lifting winch is then released thus transferring the cable load to upper anchorage. Finally, the lifting clamps and saddle are removed. Painting embedded part of cable. Working platform is installed for painting and the end part of the cable is painted as per approved procedure. The cylindrical socket is placed on the wooden plate on the socket trolley during painting. Stay cable pulling and threading. 
The stay cable is rolled until it reaches near the socket pipe. Then, a trolley is attached under this cable. The cylindrical socket is dismantled from the bobbin and mounted on the socket trolley. The cable is pulled until it hangs freely. It is then temporarily fixed to the deck. The embedded part of cable is painted with approved procedure. After painting, it is pulled near to the socket pipe and aligned. The socket anchor head is threaded with adapter into the cylindrical socket. Now, the stressing jack is placed on the chair that is fixed to tapped holes on the bearing plates at four corners. Then the socket is pulled into the socket pipe until the lock nut can be turned on the socket. The lock nut is set on the bearing plate. Half PVC pipes are placed into the socket pipe for protection of the socket and cable prior to installation. Threading of the cable into the socket pipe is carried out by pulling strands fitted to the pulling sleeve, which is screwed to the cylindrical socket. Stay cable stressing. Stressing is done in two stages. At first, the cable is stressed up to 70% of installation force and then to the full installation force as decided by the designer based on the deck survey result. Back stay cable 13 installation. Installation of cable stay 13 was a critical activity as it was installed across the river. The challenge was successfully tackled and the installation was completed without any problem. Closure joints. Closure joints is the last activity related to installation of stay cables. Today we are doing the, the final closure pour of the deck. It's a very um, important occasion as it now links um, the Naini side with the Allahabad side. After completion of casting deck for cable stays 13, the ends of the cantilever are surveyed to determine the levels and longitudinal positions of the form traveller. Longitudinal jacking of the deck is carried out as per designer's calculation, based upon the survey result and the design analysis. Vertical jacking of the deck is done if there is a difference in profile as per the survey. The diaphragm and deck slab on the left and right side are cast followed by edge beams of closing pores. Finally, the diaphragm and deck of closing pore is cast. This is followed by complete stressing of tendons in edge beams. All the stays are then re-stressed to the final required force. The deck profile is surveyed to confirm alignment. Individual stays are re-stressed if required. Services a six-lane toll plaza, instrumentation, illumination and landscaping are an integral part of this project. The bridge also has a cycle track and a footpath on either side complete with handrails, crash barriers and ornamental lights apart from the very bright street lights. The surface of the road on the bridge portion has been finished with a special anti-skid treatment to provide and enhance the safety of the vehicles flying over the bridge and of the people traveling in them. We are providing four lane bridge plus two cycle tracks, one on either side, enough lights on the main road and also some additional ornamental lights on the footpaths of the main cable state portion. There will be a toll plaza at one, on the, one end of this bridge it, uh, people who cross the bridge for cars and above, they have to pay some toll to cross the bridge. On the bridge portion, we have got some mastic covering on top of it, so that uh, the wearing course is protected sufficiently. And uh, this is a very slender bridge, which uh, we took much pain to design as well as construct. And uh, it is probably one of the most slender bridges in India. The river Yamuna gave us some problem because of its depth and uh, uh, nature because uh, in during monsoon the water comes back from the Sangam area from Ganga to Yamuna and uh, we have some problems over there but we overcome all those 
we had some other problems because of the locality and all but we we are thankful to all the local people and the local authorities that they extended enough support to fin complete this bridge you can see the crash barriers handrails and uh, this handrail unlike other highways we have got for the entire length of this bridge along with the roads so from the gt junction right through the river junction we have got handrails on either sides the museum, museum under, under the bridge which is also the first time probably in india where a museum is dedicated to a bridge it is built just and below the bridge where you can see all the how we constructed the bridge how the concept came up and all the different uh, angles of the bridge we have got some special fountains at our islands which improves the landscaping we because of the high embankment we have to put in we have provided a special kind of protection to that in the form of mulch mat and grassing and uh, we are also doing some stone uh, sculptures at the junctions which will give a different look to this bridge uh, all together illumination and electrical work the main objective of the electrical system is to illuminate the concrete cable stay bridge and the approach roads at night the pylons and the cables will be illuminated along with the bridge deck to create a floating effect the main control of the illumination system is from the substation and dg room situated at toll plaza there are 56 poles on the bridge portion at center to center distance of 27 meters and 129 poles are located on the approach roads at a center to center distance of 30 meters the height of each pole is 9 meters sodium vapor lamps of 150 watts each are used for the poles as these lights provide good visibility in the fog every pole has been provided with an indivisible miniature circuit breaker or an mcb in case of a fault only that pole gets disconnected from the circuit lights on other poles remain unaffected two high mast lights have been installed at either end of the toll plaza each mast light has six fittings and these maintain a lighting level of 50 lux apart from this two aviation lights are fixed on pylon tops for safety two incandescent lights of 60 watts are used for each of this aviation lights eight focus lights are provided for focusing on pylon from both sides of each pylon four lights focus on the upper area while four others focus on the lower side for the main deck a total of 104 lights have been used for focusing on the cables thus each cable has been illuminated with eight lights Sodium vapor lamps of 250 watts each are used for this area. The angle of the glasses fitted on the light fittings is adjusted in such a manner that the light will not distract the vehicle drivers. Anti-glare masks are also fitted on these focal lights for the same purpose. This is to protect the vehicle drivers from the reflection. 16 focus lights are fixed on the lower crossbeam for focusing under the deck area. These are anti-dazzler lights of 250 watts each. A total of 142 post-stop lanterns are provided on the side railings at a center to center distance of 9 meters. The posts are 3 meters high and sodium vapor lamps of 70 watts each are provided for these fittings. Two DG sets of capacity 63 kVA each have been arranged for generation of power. in case of power failure from grid these are located at the toll plaza one of the dg sets will supply power to illuminate the bridge portion while the other will feed power to toll plaza building and the two high masts at toll plaza apart from the bridge lighting 10 traffic islands and 11 fountains will also be adequately lit all the safety requirements have been properly addressed and conform to international standards an earth pit is provided at every 10th pole 13 earth pits have been provided at the toll plaza instrumentation a state of the art instrumentation system has been installed to collect data to analyze structural behavior of the bridge along with the meteorological and traffic data which can be accessed through internet nowadays uh, 
all our client whosoever wants their work done they have become very demanding they want their product to be quickly constructed it should be aesthetically nice at the same time strong and incidentally the project where we are standing it meets all the requirement it is really very sleek strong good to look, look at and it has come in the period of say about 40 months which is very quick by any standard this bridge has been designed based on certain assumption now it has got the uniqueness to monitor all this parameter parameters are different see it can be wind in can be temperature it can be movement of the traffic it can be speed of the traffic it has got every means to record it and these recordings are they are con centrally controlled at our toll plaza and with this we can analyze whether our structure is responding to the design requirement or not we have constructed this particular bridge on the international design requirement and we have to continuously monitor whether it is meeting the requirement or not why because it's a sleek structure it is always subject to severe condition in the terms of wind in terms of temperature in terms of speed in terms of vibration everything and if it goes beyond that parameter what should be the remedy and whether it has caused any damage to the structure that everything can be monitored on a screen of a computer and yes if it exceeds that parameter we can just interact with the people directly sitting over there on the net and we can get the remedy and we can monitor the things going around us so this way this bridge is unique and enough amount has been spent on this instrumentation similarly all other projects they do not uh, consider landscaping around this structure but yes this is a project which you will find greenery all around and we have given enough attention to the landscaping meeting the requirement of environment the system consists of 10 different types of sensors used for a variety of purposes strain gauges these are provided to check and give data about the stress and strain developed in concrete at the time of dynamic and static load a total of 161 strain gauges are provided and are controlled through seven unit boxes located between P15 and P20. Displacement sensors. These are used to check and give data about expansion and contraction or the to and fro displacement. One such sensor is located at the joint between P15 and P16 while the other is at the joint between P19 and P20. Barometric sensor. This is used for checking atmospheric pressure and is located at the top of the pylon P18. Air temperature sensors. These sensors record air temperature and also the relative humidity. Two such sensors have been provided. One at the top of pylon P18 and the other at the top of post top lantern. Wind anemometer. The purpose of providing these sensors is to check wind velocity and direction. One such sensor is located at the top of pylon P18, while two more are located at upstream and downstream footway between P17 and P18. Weigh in motion sensor. It has been provided to check the weight of a vehicle traveling over itself. Located at the chain edge 585, it is directly connected to the toll plaza. Accelerometer. These are used to check the vibration in the cables due to the movement of traffic on the bridge. Ten such accelerometers are provided, located at every 13th cable on downstream and upstream side. Rain gauge. The rain gauge is located at the top of the pylon P18. Air quality sensor. It is provided for checking the levels of various gas components in the air and is located at the top of pylon P18. Geoposition stations. A state-of-the-art global positioning system is used for checking the displacement of pylons 
from the default position. Three sensors are provided for this purpose. While one each is located at the top of pylons P17 and P18, the third is located at the tall plaza. Thus, a total of 185 sensors are provided to collect data of various types. Power for all these sensors has been provided through UPS. Optical fiber cables are used to connect all the controlling unit boxes to the instrumentation room situated at the tall plaza. However, the GPS data gathered from the geoposition stations is monitored separately. In case of any abnormal behavior of the structure of the bridge during its life, the system will automatically start taking data more frequently and make it available over the internet to enable engineers to analyze the problem from their office or even from home. Challenges The teams working on this gigantic project faced many challenges while designing and executing the work. However, these were always treated as opportunities to excel. The bridge that stands tall over the river Yamuna today is a testimony to this positive attitude. We had to mobilize many kinds, many numbers of marine equipment because we are working on the river. These many numbers of equipment mobilized from Calcutta through Ganga River the distance was 1,600 kilometers. Eventually, we brought it to site. Non-availability of required draft in River Ganga resulted in delayed arrival of some of the equipment. It was eventually solved by dismantling and unloading some of the equipment at Patna and transporting them by road. The barges arrived with balance equipment by road transport. This resulted in delayed mobilization of pylon foundation works. However, the contractors made up for most of the delay by using innovative methods to increase the speed of work without compromising on quality. Uh, here, uh, the major challenge is what we uh, overcame here. First, uh, starting from the foundation, the well foundations where tilt and shift of the wells, bringing it under control is always uh, challenging to any construction engineer. Here, there have been uh, 26 wells and the sinking has been to the tune of about uh, 1,100 uh, running meter. And the, all the wells, the entire sinking operation could be completed within the specifications of tilt and shift which uh, has been a major achievement. High fluctuation of water level during monsoon was a factor likely to affect the speed of work. This was tackled by construction of additional jetties to cater for high levels so that the work could be carried out in spite of high water levels. High heat of hydration of grade 53 cement resulted in high temperature in concrete inducing thermal cracks in one lift of one pylon of well foundation. The extent of crack was investigated and repaired by making a V-notch and filling with concrete during next lift. Precautions taken in the form of use of ice in water, use of aggregates stacked in shade, wet covering of cement silo and transit mixers, additional surface reinforcement, concreting at night, restricting concrete temperatures at the time of pouring to around 30 degrees centigrade and fogging immediately after concreting followed by constant curing with wetted sugar bags was successful in arresting any further such occurrence. It was a tricky issue to ensure proper alignment of pylon legs. The lower legs were so shaped that its self-weight always induced a deflection outward. During construction there was no means to correct it until it reached the underside of lower cross beam. The construction was based on survey results in conjunction with theoretical alignments and levels. To minimize accidents, 
safety precautions of the highest standards had to be enforced. At high levels, safety nets, handrails and proper platforms were compulsory. All access ladders were checked before being approved for use. Floating jetties were properly anchored and safety signs were put up everywhere. Fabrication of foam traveller was checked rigorously to ensure safety of structure as well as people working with it. The biggest challenge was to make everybody on site aware of safety. Second one, we are working on the river, above the river, we are working in the air, especially the pylon height 90 meter. It is very difficult and very dangerous from the bottom to top. We plan various kind of method, sequence of work and design calculation. And we discussed with consultant, finally agreed with consultant before starting the work. Without any accident, any dangerous happening, we complete the pilot. Geometry control of deck with design analysis was also an important issue. The deck structure was supported from stay cables during construction. Geometry control of the deck was a great challenge owing to relative movement of pylon and temperature etc. The designers developed a design model of the bridge for this purpose. An initiative from the contractors resulted in another model of the bridge from the execution point of view. The designers then agreed to the model to be adopted with 298 construction stages. The geometry control during construction was taken care by early morning survey throughout the construction period and checking with reference to models agreed to by the designers at site as well as abroad whenever necessary. We can say for all uh, practical purpose that it is going to uh, make a lot of changes in the life of the people uh, in terms of development around the area on either side of this river whether it is Allahabad or Naini in terms of connectivity movement and it is bound to bring the prosperity to the people around this area. This bridge has the uniqueness of uh, having lot of landscaping work uh, below this uh, bridge and around that bridge area which is normally not found in the project where the other uh, bridges work is going on. So it will be a good tourist spot for the Allahabad people and it will bring lot of people from other area also. So finally it is a benefit to the people. Uh, in the, on the part of NHI uh, we should say that all the difficulties we encountered from the local authorities from bodies like the uh, power corporation or the gel nikam and such bodies who look after the utilities. Uh, we could successfully negotiate with them and uh, removed all the utilities, shifted all the utilities in time to provide a working space for the contractor. Uh, regarding the HCC's uh, part, uh, we should uh, thank them because the wells they are constructed well in time rather uh, without thinking that uh, these were very much time taking jobs and uh, they did in a regular manner. Uh, there were not much, uh, they not uh, appreciated, appreciable tilts or shifts of the wells and we must also thank the surveyors the, for such a bridge to actually match both the ends of the bridge, surveyors play a very important role and in our case the surveyors of both the Hyundai HCC as well as the Kohis Panjavi, they did uh, in my opinion a brilliant job in actually getting everything in proper position while we did have little to check because the entire program was on a computer and uh, we every time the load was changing we were not able to ensure what should be the final thing but at the end when we met we, we knew that the survey have done a brilliant job. Quality management systems 
quality management systems of international standard were adopted and implemented rigorously for this project. Before doing any work at site, engineers had to prepare a methodology statement giving details of how the work will be carried out at site as per the IS code. If the methodology was approved, the work could start at site. In case of any comments, the engineer had to revise the methodology statement and resubmit the same for approval. The work could commence only on approval of this revised methodology statement. Before the commencement of work on site on any day, an inspection requisition slip was made. The consultant visited the site on behalf of the client and the work started only after the IRS was signed by him. If it was observed that any work on site was not according to the requirements, non-conformity report or NCR was made, inclusive of the commence from the client. The work was carried out as per the commence and then NCR was closed by signing it. Today, this beautiful structure that we see is nothing but a fitting tribute to an inspired and collective effort put in by one and all related to the project. NHAI, the consultants, the contractors, engineers, workers, everybody has contributed from the bottom of their heart. The bridge has now been opened for the people for whom it was ultimately constructed, the people of Allahabad. Today, the bridge stands tall over the river Yamuna and has become the new identity of Allahabad. It has not only solved the bottleneck in traffic, but also in the way to progress and prosperity. Now, the sun rises in Allahabad on each day to a new bridge of hope. Truly, the bridge has become the pride of India.